You don't know if it's a single storey building, a series of shipping containers, or a four storey building, until you get a figure, like in a de Curico painting, against the object, and then you can start seeing the scale. The ideas for ACCA responded primarily to the brief and to the context that we were building in. Historically, previous occupation on the site were warehouses, factories, iron foundries, so it had an industrial past and it was associated with the Malthouse building. The colour of Malthouse with the polychrome brickwork steered us toward, initially it was actually copper we were going to clad the building in, but due to budget restrictions we ended up with core 10 steel. There's also a reference to the tight skin, which is the architectural form of those factories that preceded Acker. Our practice did a lot of research on the cladding of the building, a company called Bethlehem Steel, which are in the Midwest of America, who invented Core 10 steel. If it rusts, a crystalline layer forms over the rust to stop it rusting more. Of course, it was an ideal material for American artists in the 60s to use for sculpture, because effectively it'll last forever. Randall and I are both interested in some of those artists like Richard Serra and uh, Robert Smithson and the indel indelible quality of making an object that is undecorated and um, I think Acker sitting on the flat ground plane does look like a rock and we would like to think that the building was made five million years ago and through erosion exposed. Architecturally this is true to the original idea which were those faceted collapsing planes and sort of de Curico-esque um, scalelessness. The gallery spaces um, in Acker are based on an 18th century European model like the Kunsthalle where there's a large hall um, which is the main exhibition space and then a series of three galleries, although with the way Juliana curates the building, you'd never know there were three galleries, which is fantastic. But the three galleries are different sizes and heights. The smallest footprint is the tallest gallery, and it proceeds to get wider and lower as it works toward the back of the building. There's very few right angles in the building, um, and that's to do with perspective and allowing artists to manipulate the space freely rather than having the white cube, basically. The building was always designed to be robust, to be a laboratory rather than a precious gallery, and that was meant to enable any sort of art practice. We just wanted to make something with clarity that artists could explore their work in, in a carefree way. I think one of the successes of ACCA is its identity and its clarity and part of that's architectural because that preceded what was exhibited in it but the vigour that Juliana and Kay puts into Acker and the clarity of the house that it's in together make it quite internationally recognisable.